Is Restylane Lift okay to inject into my temples? I recently, two weeks ago, had Restylane Lift injected into my temples. At the end of a week, I noticed nodules appearing more on my left side. The injector kept massaging it in. When the swelling went down, I noticed some nodules going into the sides of my eyes. When I told her, she said the bumps are there because she didn't have enough. Previously, I had Voluma put there by a board-certified plastic surgeon. It was always smooth. I am so distressed by this. What can I do? Thank you for your question. You submitted a question with several photos, and you're asking, is Restylane Lift safe for temples? And in the narrative of your question, you describe a situation where you got the injectable placed and that you noticed some lumps in the left side of your, uh, of your temple, uh, or the left temple, and you stated that uh, when you massage those lumps, the lumps actually moved closer to the eye. You, um, you also state that you had previously gone to a surgeon who, when, who performed a comparable procedure with Voluma and that you didn't have lumps. Well, to help you, uh, guide you, uh, and understand the issues at hand, um, I'll discuss with you a little bit about the anatomy and the techniques. Uh, as a little background, I'm a board-certified cosmetic surgeon and a fellowship-trained oculofacial plastic and reconstructive surgeon. I've been in practice in Manhattan and Long Island for over 20 years. I use both Restylane Lift and Voluma in my practice. I'm quite familiar with these products. And I can just begin by stating to you uh, my bias, which is going to be apparent because of my own background. I'm a surgeon. I, I trained um, in, in uh, surgical fields, and, uh, and in, in my, during my residency, I, I did a residency at a level one trauma center. And the point of explaining this is to help you understand that when it comes to injectable fillers, especially when you're going below the dermis or uh, at the deeper levels of the soft tissue and the, uh, and the anatomy gets a little bit more um, involved, it does help. It's a great advantage um, from my experience that a surgeon knows this anatomy very, very well. And you can debate which kind of surgeon, but anyone who's worked on the face, who has, who has trained in, during residency in trauma, or as, or in fellowship, or in uh, training related to cosmetic surgery, in procedures such as brow lifts or endoscopic brow lifts, or like when I did my fellowship, coronal brow lifts, which were open brow lifts, you understand the anatomy of that space. And this is the, it's called the temporal fossa and it has a muscle called the temporalis muscle. So when, when someone is injecting in this area, I can see how the placement of this material could be problematic to somebody who has not seen the tissue open in, in their, during their um, experience of whether it's in, in whatever training they have. So I think what you experienced with the surgeon before was the surgeon's confidence in their ability to place the material in an artful way at a deeper level where they were confident that this would result in a smoother appearance. So I don't think you have to blame the material. Restylane and Lift and Voluma have comparable viscosities. So it's not like you were using a very uh, thin, uh, a thin material versus a thick material. It really comes down to the level of the uh, placement. Now there are times where more superficial placement may be of value, but I think when you're thinking about the placement and what your past experience was, it was fairly obvious that your previous doctor had placed it at a deeper level with confidence, because when one thing I have to stress is when. Uh, when someone is placing this filler in this particular area, there are risks. There are very important nerves. There are important vessels in this area. 
So I can see how somebody would want to be conservative and be more superficial. But when you understand this anatomy very well, you can work around this area. And I have to say that I use both Restylane Lift and Voluma in, this, in the temporal area. And I, have, I, I consistently get um, very good results. And I'm able to get that level of smoothness. Sometimes you just need also a lot of volume. This is a fossa. It's got an indentation. There are times when people actually, as we get older, they, the temples get deeper and it starts to indent. So placement of volume in there is uh, um, invaluable. And particularly around the rim of the bone or the orbital rim where it transitions. And that's why when material is being uh, massaged, it actually shifted forward. So you may want to strategy, try a strategy like having the material dissolved uh, with hyaluronidase if it hasn't gotten diffused and, and, and relatively um, more smooth, and then have the, uh, have the procedure done uh, by another provider, another, uh, another um, and, and this time maybe it's better for you to choose uh, someone with a surgical background. So I think that um, there, there's something to be learned here as well, which is in, when you find someone who does, does work for you that you like, it's good to stick with them. I mean, a lot of times people bounce from um, different practitioners and uh, find themselves looking for deals, and unfortunately there's no such thing as a good deal. Um, you really have, in my practice, I, I would say that some, the majority of my patients are patients who, who understand, who, who, who share my aesthetic style and my values and they, and we resonate in the approach and style. And so I become their primary care doctor for beauty in addition to all the different procedures that I can provide for them. I actually give them guidance and advice uh, to help them uh, navigate this, the, the, the uh, information overload that is the, the reality um, these days. So I would say find the doctor that you, that you, are, that you are really comfortable with and, and see about, about being consistent about these types of uh, procedures uh, because it's, it, it's, it's, it's a lot more, it's not a commodity. It really is an art, and an art that you can't just transfer one to the, from one to the other. You really, because a lot of times people feel that if if provider A offers injector uh, injector B, and then provider B offers the same thing, it's equal. No, the material can be equal, but how the material is used can be quite different. So I hope that was helpful. I wish you the best of luck. Thank you for your question.